You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means we are back. It is Friday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. It's time to talk a little bit of volatility. And man, we got something to talk about. Should be a fun time. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E, optionsinsider.com, as well as from the network upon which all of you folks are mainlining these days. Hope you're having a good trading week out there. It's been a bit of a tumultuous one out there, so definitely one for some of our savvier vol traders out there to pay attention, not really a set it and forget it type of week so a lot to get to here on the show of course if you like what you hear this show anything else on the network and first off if you're one of the handful who's just listening to vol views make sure you listen to the full network we know we have our devoted vol views audience we love you all out there but make sure you get in the full network there's a lot of great stuff coming at you throughout the week and of course if you want even more great content in your lives including let's say i don't know you don't want the party to end after vol views on friday you want to come back for a little bit of options oddities where we dive deep into the weird and wild and wonderful trades that are lighting up our tape this week. Only one place to go, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. Once you click on that, you get access to, I don't know, I've lost count, 300 plus episodes waiting for you there. Second you hit that button, you get early access to a lot of the other stuff that we do, like I'm going down to OIC pretty soon, and we'll have a lot of great content coming from there. You guys and gals get all that stuff first. You get exclusive stuff, like, of course, that panel I did with the flow master and a bunch of other great people over there at sta a few months back as well as awesome giveaways a whole bunch more live streams the optionsinsider.com is the place to go slash pro to learn more as we go around the horn and see who's joining us today first we return once again to the southern volatility mecca where we are joined once again by the greasiest of meatballs mr mark sebastian from optionpit.com mr meatball how go things in the southern volatility mecca sir Ah, happy Friday, Mark. Things are great. Uh, interesting day. We've got uh, a little bit of a tech wreck, but uh, you know, a, a rally in a lot of the other uh, less interesting names. <laughs> yes, a lot to a lot to parse there, and also joining us to help us parse all of this madness. We have the once future and now present Dr. Vicks, who's holding court over there at the Kelly School of Business these days. And rumor has it may be working on a couple more books somewhere down the road. Uh, Mr. Russell Rhodes, welcome back to the program, sir. I am always, as as always, thrilled to be here um, and looking forward to talking about. Uh, we, we've got, like you said, we got stuff to talk about. Yeah, you picked a I'm good one this week. excited about that. So let's get to it. A little bit of the old volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All 
All right, listeners, let's sink our teeth into it because it's a juicy one this week. Uh, coming into the start of the show, of course, the Volatility Review listeners, a portion of the show where we break down all the action, lighting it up out there on the ball side from a trades, trends, analysis, unusual activity, all sorts of fun perspectives, as we alluded to, as we hinted to at the top of the show. Uh, there's some stuff popping off this week, listeners, including the much-anticipated, perhaps hoped it would not happen, Israeli response to Iran. That happened, of course, uh, in the overnight session there. There's a lot of people thinking things were really going to pop off in the open, and they did. We opened up from a VIX cash perspective back not just at a 19, not just at a 20 handle even, north of a 20 handle, isn't it? We got 21.33 is where we opened in the VIX cash and then uh, saner heads did prevail as we're kicking off the show here, listeners. Uh, VIX Cash back down to about almost a 19, 1890. That puts it down pretty much a tenth of a point. It's pretty much unched on the week <laughs> right now, listeners, which, again, if you've been listening to the show for a while, you know that's a, it's a fairly difficult feat to pull off. They have indeed been coming for a lot of the major indices, though. Well, I guess kind of depends where you're looking right now. But in the S&P land where we hang our hat, we are back below that magical, mythical 5,000 level in the SPX listeners. That has been a talking point for a while. What happens when we break through it? Is it look out below time or not? In fact, we, had a, we have a poll question about this live right now. It went live yesterday during, I believe it was the option block, when this was still a bit of a theoretical prospect. We were still north of 5,000. We asked you folks in the audience, if we break through it uh, yesterday or in the overnight or coming into today, is that a lookout below moment for the market or just another data point out there, listeners? And our audience, actually, 50-50. They're split. They can't make up their minds whether it's a lookout below moment or not right now. Uh, the market selling off for a bit. We got down to about 49.67 or so. It looks like in the S&P, it looks like we have gained some of that back now, back to about 49.88. Still off almost half a percent in the S&P and, of course, still below that magical level of 5,000 out there, but not perhaps as aggressive as a sell-off as some folks might have worried about. And also, of course, given the news, people would have probably been forgiven for expecting a lot more. As the meatball alluded to, a bit of a tech wreck out there. NASDAQ taking it on the chin off about 1.33%. And the Dow, the home of Amazon now, actually rallying out there, which is kind of interesting, up nearly half a percent out there. And of course, not to be forgotten, our old friend Small Caps kind of hanging out close to unched up about 0.15 percent which for small caps is a bit of a rounding error day out there today so a lot to unpack a lot of folks coming into today expecting a lot of all on the table of course we've heard the fed for a while now the last few sessions also kind of adding some fuel to the fire fed governors whenever they talk you know my thoughts on the fed speaking with one voice listeners whenever the other voices start chiming in always drives me crazy a lot of those voices have been chiming in lately to say maybe we're not going to cut the rates or at least not as many times as people were hoping for so a lot of that adding fuel to some of this downside fire this week as well so a lot of things to unpack let's go around the horn let's start with our guest mr road sir what were you expecting coming into today given the news that was popping off in the after hours and is what you're seeing out there today is that meeting your expectations sir well i saw the headline before i saw the market reaction which is is kind of a fun way to do things and um needless to say i, I expected the the stock market to be down an, a lot more than it was um and part of me wondered if there was a headline where where or you know israel lightly hit iran and Iran said, OK, that's it. We're done. We won't strike back uh, <laughs> or something like that, because I was just really surprised at the overall reaction. Um, you know, and then uh, just uh, deviating a bit from the volatility area to to my first love, the Russell 2000, um, the small cap stocks. I, I came across an article this week that said that um, if you go all the way back to 1978, that the Russell 2000 is now slightly underperforming the S&P 500 for the first time over the long, 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 long period of time, uh, which makes me wonder if if now is, you know, if, if I should feel better about being long Russell short, short S&P futures. That has been your play for a little bit. Of course, it mostly, has been. It has been painful. <laughs> mostly because it's your namesake. You have to buy it. It is. Uh, and I have so, so much Russell 2000 crap to send to you for the uh, 
for the prize boxes. It's like when I was a little kid and my grandfather showed me Mark Company for the first time. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Ooh. We had to buy some. And it promptly yeah. went out of business, I believe. So, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> long story short, don't, uh, don't invest in things that are named after you, sir. It goes poorly. Uh, Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. Coming into you today, were you expecting perhaps more of a Rock'em Sock'em Robots day than we're getting, at least right now? Well, I mean, we're getting a pretty ugly day in the NASDAQ, but we're seeing a lot of strength in um, oil, in consumer staples, uh, in financials. So as we speak, the S&P is down half a percent. The NASDAQ is down 1.4. But um, talk about a well-timed rotation. RSP, which is the equal weight S&P, is now up about a half a percent. Now, this ETF is holds the same components as the S&P 500, but it equal weights the different uh, the 11 sectors via uh, the ETFs. So and then uh, rebalances quarterly. So it is now, um, you know, at, at the end of uh, March, it sold off a bunch of tech and bought a bunch of, you know, energy and, you know, consumer staples and you name it and is uh, is rallying because we're seeing strength in the financials. And as I said, and in stocks like J and J and uh, Procter and Gamble and uh, Exxon Mobil and Chevron. So the, the AXP, the, the boring names are having themselves a day it's the the Nvidia's and SMCI's of the world that are are absolutely crushing the uh, the market this morning or this afternoon now. Excuse me. Yeah, it has been fascinating to watch this play out. I was kind of like you, Russell. I was looking to see uh, was, was there some other other headline that maybe uh, mitigated what was going on. This whole thing has played out kind of strangely from the onset. Us, of course, pre-announcing. The Iranian attack on Iran, you don't often see that in geopolitics. Oh, these people are going to do this horrible thing in a couple of days, as if almost daring them not to do it, really, because the whole world knows, don't do it now. And they still did it, of course, and amounted to nothing. They came out afterwards, again, kind of unprecedented Iran, and said, oh, we consider this matter closed. It was very conciliatory in, on the global geopolitical stage. You don't really see that too often. And then, of course, uh, Israel now uh, going back the other way and deciding to... Rev up that engine again. Hopefully this will be one and done on their part as well. The endless retaliation, I think, is what the, the markets were referring, of course, on top of the Fed and everything else. We are, of course, getting overshadowed right now, but we are, of course, in earnings season as well. So that also adding some interesting fuel to the fire out there right now. Let's see how the fire is burning on the VIX future, shall we? And coming into the start of the show, of course, we had April rolling off the board this week. A sad trombone for those April 13 puts that you made us buy, myself and the Rock Lobster, Mr. <laughs> Poor Mr. Rock Lobster. Uh, he was choking on those as well out there. But yes, never let it be said we don't listen to our audience, even when it literally costs us money. You folks said those are a screaming buy. You should buy them. And we did. And they went literally nowhere. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, April 13 puts uh, RIP to them out there. And of course, RIP to April off the board, May in the pole position right now, June slotting up right behind it. Both of those futures right now up slightly, up about a quarter of a point. Again, a moving target as it always is with the front end of the futures curve. If we re rack these in 10 minutes, probably have a very different story. But that's where they were right as we were kicking off the show. Uh, Mr. Meatball, what are your thoughts out there on the VIX futures? And also, we had some brief moments of backwardation earlier this week uh, what were your thoughts seeing that haven't seen that in a little while sir yeah we we did um the market is the market is telling us that we're going to continue to move we, you know we've had i mean how many days in a row have we had this kind of partial backwardation where the cash is over the futures it's it's been you know at least i mean it's been since at least last thursday um and the futures themselves, outside of, you know, maybe a brief one day stint, they've been pretty good about staying in a contango underneath the VIX, uh, starting to behave like maybe that's going to change here shortly. 
Um, very interested to see how the day progresses because it is, uh, it is, it is uh, definitely ugly, ugly out there. But you know, when you have the cash over four months of futures, that is the cash index basically telling you we are going to get wild moves, which is uh, hard to argue with at this point. By the way, I like to give credit where credit is due. We had a listener write in, I believe it was on Monday on tax day, asking us when was the last time the VIX futures closed in backwardation. But I always like to give credit to people when they solve and answer their own question. He wrote back in a few minutes later, said, never mind, stop looking, I found it. It was back on October 26th of last year. So yes, it has been a little while since we closed, emphasis on closed, since we closed backwards out there, all the way to pretty much leading into Halloween last year, which was, of course, the nadir for a lot of the stocks out there, listeners. And of course, also... The beginning of this near-term bull rally, we've had this aggressive rally in the S&P for the better part of the last uh, six months or so. Mr. Rhodes, same question for you, sir. What's catching your eye out there in the vol surface this week? Well, you're getting me all fired up. How do we define backwardation? That is a good question. Meatball is talking, <laughs> Meat Cause... talking about cash, obviously, right? And for a lot of people... They like to look at more at the future side, right? Because yeah, I mean, it, like I said, we're in kind of like a, I call it a partial backwardation. Yeah, where... that's that that's the, it, Mark in Texas. That's exactly uh, kind of where I, what I was thinking as well. Is I I always just I I think the most important information is cash month one month two, you know. And if those are if if those are in backward if if you can get backwardation from that, I I've always thought and that that's how you would go about defining it. And then also that, that thing I haven't updated in forever where come up with a consistent 30-day VIX future uh, balancing the front two months. Uh, whenever spot closes above that number, I've always thought that was a good backwardation number, uh, a good way to define it as well. There's no chance in hell we're going to have backwardation between now and at least October because uh, that one's always going to be at a premium. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you know, we, we shouldn't say that the, the curve, if we have backwardation on the short end, uh, isn't telling us that maybe uh, the, the traders think that VIX is going to come in a bit. Um, I don't think we've been in enough of backwardation that, that we're seeing an indication like that. A backwardation indication. That's going to be my new pop band. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up, though, because as Mark was saying yeah. that, I was like, yeah. I know, I I, I know I some, to be a dick some smart I aleck up, is going to write in so many and be ways like, you can. the cash you is know? not considered mm -hmm. back. Where I, I, could just, I was envisioning that in my head as Mark was yeah. saying that. So <laughs> you have preempted that, let's hope. You know, it's a thing that you wouldn't think would be controversial, what technically is backwardation. Yet I'm sure if you asked yeah. five different VIX traders, they would have five different definitions of what that is. So yeah, I'm glad we could. What do you think of listeners? What is your technical definition of backwardation? Is it backward when just the cash is above uh, the front future? Is that all it takes for you? Or does it take a little bit more? You need that real front portion of the term structure uh, to really start trading above, let's say, uh, the later portions of the term structure. Again, backward seems like a simple thing. But in the land of volatility, nothing is simple as we keep on rolling into the VIX options listeners, is it a banger week and indeed a banger day? The answer is yes and maybe. <laughs> banger week, definitely. We'll get to all that fun in a second. Today, again, you would be forgiven for expecting, you know, VIX cash surging north of the 20, indeed north of the 21 handle for the first time in ages all these rumors of growing geopolitical destabilization in sensitive areas like the Middle East, you'd be forgiven for expecting. Maybe a little bit more fuel to light that fire. And yet so far, it's, it's, I wouldn't call it a raging bonfire. I would call it, you could cook some s'mores on it, but that's kind of about it. Only 494,000 contracts on the tape today. I say only because on most Fridays, that would be a decent clip. The ADV, particularly when it was just last week or two weeks ago, was you know around 700-something thousand. 493 would be a pretty decent clip. You're almost pretty much to a full day's worth of paper. Uh, these days, things have changed, obviously. The ADV surging this week. Almost a million contracts a day now. That's the ADV in VIX land. 912,000. That's up 104,000. That also, in and of itself, is an indicator, listeners. When VIX gets to an ADV of close to a million contracts... You know, the game is afoot out there in the market. Things are popping off. Things are happening. 
<laughs> VIX doesn't get to 912 ADV apropos of nothing else out there. So uh, definitely a time to be paying close attention uh, to the markets. Let's break down what's lighting it up out there from a top 10 size position in VIX options right now. And if you're coming here looking for some put action, some hot and heavy put action, uh, you shall be disappointed, listeners. We are back to the 10 calls, no puts in the top 10, listeners. Read into that what you will. It's all upside all the time these days. Cost you 184,000 contracts to break into the top 10 right now. It gets you to the June 45s. So we start at the June 45s, and then we work from there, listeners. Number nine, 187,000 of the July 20s, the comparatively reasonable July 20s. Number eight, right back at it, 188,000 of the May 40s, 40s. Number seven, 202,000 of the May 25s. So there we go. A little bit of maybe some vertical action in May. I can get behind a little bit more of that than perhaps the uh, the June 45s, but I digress. Number six, 213,000 of the AUG 47 halves. You know I love that strike, listeners. All this 47 half action certainly brought a smile to my face over the last few months. Number five, 215,000 of the June 35. So June 45 is not doing it for you. Allow me to present 215,000 of the June 35s. Number four, 216,000 of the May 47 halves, right back to the nonsense. Number three, 255,000 of the May 20. Someone out there is sitting there listening to this saying, I own those 47 halves and I'm angry at you. But I digress. Let's keep rolling. Number three, 255,000 of the May 20s. Number two, 294,000 of the May 18s. And the number one size position in VIX options right now. Go ahead, quickly. Take a guess. Listen, what do you think? Is it the May 20s? Is it the June 20s? Is it something else entirely? The answer is yes, it is something else entirely. It is 300,000 almost exactly of the May 35s, three fives. So read into that what you will out there, listeners, as it's time for us to read into a little bit of weekly options nonsense. Yes, it is time for Russell's Weekly Rundown. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. Now. Russell's Weekly Rundown. All right, listeners, so nice. We always have to play it twice. Yes, it is time for Mr. Russell Rhodes to hold court on all things weekly VIX options. Mr. Rhodes, you picked a good one. Some stuff popping off this week. What came across yeah. your radar, sir? Uh, and, and, so, and typically, expiration week is kind of a tough week uh, to to come up with weekly trades. So, um, yeah, it, it, there was pl there was plenty, plenty, plenty to choose from. Uh, I do. I, I need a copy of that because um, that that of the music, because I want them to play that at my funeral before they start talking about me. All right. Uh, Monday, VIX, uh, 1926. Yeah, nice high number. Uh, somebody came in and bought in two lots of 500 each, a thousand of the May 15th, 17 puts for a dollar eight. I think that's a pretty good trade. Probably get some drifting lower at some point. Uh, then on two, uh, and and much much like you said, uh, you'd be expecting a lot of put action uh, the earlier this week. Most of what I'm talking about is puts, and then on Thursday, Friday, it flips over to calls. Um, Tuesday, uh, VIX at 1836, uh, using the April 24th options uh, that expire next Wednesday. They bought 100 of the 15 puts for 11 cents. Sold 100 of the April 24th, 14 and a half puts for a nickel net cost of six cents. Uh, if they if, if they can get VIX 1450 or lower uh, next week's expiration, then they're going to make a whopping 44 cents. Um, you know, it, part of the re you, you said that somebody was going to be upset at you about the 47 and a half options. Um, somebody can be up at, said at me. I don't like this trade at all. <laughs> I said, this doesn't uh, sound like it's, <laughs> this that? is not up your alley at all, sir. You know what? I mean, I don't like this trade. How at do all. you really I, feel? Yeah. Well, hell, if I had done this trade, I would have bought the, uh, the, the 15 puts for 11 cents. Uh, but I would have waited, uh, cause if, if, if we're buying those, you think the market's going lower or you think VIX is going lower. I would have waited and sold some other puts. Uh, on some, I would have planned on selling some other puts on weakness against it, but giving myself the opportunity to let it run a little bit is is where I'd be going with that. Um, so yeah, I just don't really like that trade at all. And 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 
I've, I've had people email me when I've gone through the weekly trades and go, you recommended this. No, I'm talking about what's on the tape. So I'm going to start being very clear what I like and don't like. And here's another trade I don't like. Um, on Wednesday, uh, I think late, a little bit later in the day, uh, VIX was at 18.16. And somebody bought 150 of the May 15th, 15 puts, and sold 150 of the May 15th, 13 puts for eight cents. Uh, that would be a net cost of 38 cents. Uh, again, I, yeah, I, I, I question, uh, until the whole geopolitical situation in the world gets cleared up, uh, but also it's an election year, et cetera. I just feel like VIX has got a lot of reasons to stay elevated and trying to play a move under 15, especially in the near term. Uh, I just don't know if that's the best of moves these days. Uh, so let's let's talk about um, some, some, some trades that I do like. Uh, Thursday, uh, VIX at 1829, somebody sold... Uh, 100 of the April 24th, 21 calls uh, for 33 cents, but the 31 calls uh, going up 10 points to, to protect themselves. And they had to pay nine cents for that protection, uh, which, uh, you know, think about that one for a minute. Uh, you got VIX at 1829 and, uh, you know, the, the, 31 strike calls, 20, uh, I'm sorry, 12 points out of the money or so, 13, almost 13 points out of the money. Uh, you got to pay nine cents for those when they've got three trading days remaining. Um, so they did this trade. They took in a credit of 24 cents. Longest fix stays under 21. They're doing fine. You like a little that bit one? later that day. That one blows somebody, your skirt up? That, that, that's the one? Do what? That one blows your skirt up? That's, that's the trade that you liked? I, I like it better than the other ones. I, I guess damning it with faint yeah, praise I mean, a little bit. But yeah. I just no, I like it. I mean, if, let's put it: if you think VIX is going to grind lower or not go higher, I'd be selling out of the money call spreads as opposed to trying to buy an out of the money put, planning on some sort of a drift, because VIX will hold its value. Is VIX is going to hold its value? Um, you know, every week until we're not worried about what might happen over the weekend. And don't tell me that VIX is not going to go up a half a point a point from where we are right now just on those concerns in the last couple hours of today. Yeah, I mean, we've seen literal yeah. weekend risk lately, right? Yeah, it's, it, weekend risk comes and goes, and, and we're back in a, in a period where I, I think it's around. Uh, and it should injustifiably around. Um, so real quick, just uh, a little bit later on Thursday uh, with VIX at 1739, uh, somebody sold the April 24th call, 20 strike calls, and bought the April 24th, 25 strike calls, took in a 20 cent credit. And then today, earlier today, uh, with VIX was at 1854, somebody sold the uh, April 24th, 19 calls for 49 cents and bought the April 24th, 28 calls for nine cents. Again, really expensive uh out of the money call there. They took in a credit of 40 cents. And this trade, these two trades were done within. Uh, I think three minutes of each other. So I'm saying that we've got a bear call stupid because, <laughs> which is not a term, but, um, so, and then just, uh, just a couple of minutes later, somebody sold a hundred of the April 24th, 18 calls and bought a hundred of the April 24th, 25 calls and took in a credit of 67 cents. So, you know, kind of the same thinking there, uh, just two bear call spreads back to back, same size, and, um, you know, maybe a little bit better credit on the second one than the first one. So if that's the same trader, that's our first ever bear call stupid that we picked up on ever. Breaking new ground here on Vol Views <laughs> every week. You know, I love we just we just talked about stupids again on on options boot camp this week and how how little I care for them. And <laughs> so you brought them back up on Vol Views, my favorite strategy of all time out there as much as you love that selling of upside calls in vix uh, i love the stupid even more listeners uh, people are loving themselves some vix options right now as well listeners uh, before i break down the week i mentioned it was a banger week uh SIBO also coming out with some data over there about last week the 12th 2.61 million contracts going up in vix land that's a lot in fact it's the most 
VIX options volume we've seen since another day, you might remember, back, oh, in February of 2018 called Volmageddon. Now, when I say it like that, and that's the way Sibo put it out, it might sound a little misleading. You might think, oh, my God, Volmageddon numbers. Not quite. It's the most active since <laughs> Volmageddon. Volmageddon, I'm looking here. It's kind of hard to read with the chart. Looks like it was a little bit shy of 4.5 million, about 4.4 million, uh, somewhere in that range. Friday, not quite those levels, but still a banger day, 2.61 million. So, again, it shows you why this ADV is surging out there in VIX options right now. Uh, nothing to threaten that right now, even though we, we came close earlier this week. This is kind of like a, a week in reverse. It started off really hot, and then it's ending with a whimper. We'll see if we get some more weekend risk. Last week was kind of the revenge of weekend risk, literally, driving the markets down, everyone freaking out over the weekend. We'll see if we have a a recurrence of that over the weekend this week, listeners. Right now, though, it doesn't seem like a lot of people are really sweating this weekend. Only 493,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, the big dog out there, 39,000 of the May 15 puts, followed by number two, 33, almost 34,000 of the June 15 puts. You might look at that and think, oh, a bit of a roll from May to June. But no, we actually dug in, and it looks like it's actually a June 15, 16 put spread that went up at least 20,000 times, and then the uh, May 15 puts are their own beast entirely. Paper bought them outright 30,000 times for 36 cents. Uh, could have been closing on that one out there as well. It could be just another flyer. You like those? May 15 puts for 36 cents. Listeners, which way are you going? Buying or selling on those? I would put that poll out to you, but then you'd, we'd make us buy them again, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> Even though 15s may be a little bit more palatable than the 13s were not too long ago. By the way, let's finish off the rest of today. Uh, 32,000 per the May 28s, 29, almost 30,000 of the May 25s. And rounding out the top five on a pretty light Friday, given all the things that are going on out there. 27,000 of the June 16 puts. Yesterday, also fairly anemic. Might be saying, where's all this volume coming from? Well, just wait. Uh, 680,000 on the tape yesterday. The big dog yesterday, 58,000 of the May 14 half puts. Interesting. So maybe if you don't like the 15s, listeners. Allow me to present the May 14 half puts, listener. Let's see, what price did those go up for yesterday? If my system will play ball with me, 27 cents. So <laughs> 15 puts today for 30 cents, 14 half puts yesterday for 27 cents. Obviously, a little bit of a different VIX regime yesterday versus today, hence that similarity in prices. Uh, but intriguing stuff nonetheless. By the way, number two, 50,000 of the June 25s. Number three, 47,000 of the June 13 puts. Number four, we've got 45,000 of the May 36s. And rounding out the top five yesterday, 37, almost 38,000 of the May 16 puts. Now we're getting to the banger days of the week. Wednesday, 917,000 contracts on the tape. The big dog, 62,000 of the May 15 puts, followed by number two, 50K of the May 18s. Number three, 37,000. We're back at it, listeners. May 75s. I haven't seen a strike like that in a while. That in and of itself is perhaps indicative of the game being afoot out there right now, listeners. Uh, 37,000 of those bad boys going up. Number four, 32, almost 33,000 of the May 14 half puts. And rounding out the top five on Wednesday, 31,000 of the May 20s. Tuesday, a banger day, 1.52 million contracts on the tape. The big dog, nearly 100,000, 98,000 of the April 20s, followed by 83, almost 84,000 of the April 19 calls. Number three, 76,000 of the May 36s. Number four, 70,000 of the April 17 puts. And rounding out the top five on a banger Tuesday, 64K of the April 18s. Notice no April 13 puts to be found anywhere in there. Sad trombone listeners. Monday, 1.89 million contracts on the tape there for Monday listeners. So the banger day of the week. Obviously not quite up to the Friday level, but pretty darn close. The big dog on Monday, 190,000 of the April 18s, followed by number two, 125,000 of the July 20s. As you'll recall, we dug into these on the option block. On Monday, listeners, looks like that May 18, July 20 roll went up about 118,000 times. Slate paper did it for 59 cents, buck 84 on the 20s in July, buck 25 on the 18s in May. So maybe doing a little bit of the old up and out, if that's the case. 
They paid almost 60 cents for that. You like that, listeners? You like that either roll or opening? Hard to tell because there's so much OI on both out there. And then number three, we had 123,000 of the April 20s. A number four, 78,000 of the April 18s. And rounding out the top five on a banger Monday, 75,000 of the May 17 puts. So a lot going up out here. By the way, those, if you're wondering, those May 18s, they opened those back on April 2nd. They paid a buck 31 for those back on April 2nd. So they pretty much took the opportunity to scratch them and then rolled them out to July. Obviously, if they had maybe kept their powder dry a little bit, they could have got a better level, maybe actually made some money on the May 18s. But again, past is always prologue. So they scratched those and they kind of reestablished on the July 20s and paid roughly 60 cents for the privilege. Let us know if you like those. Mr. Meatball, speaking of liking things, a lot of paper going up this week. Anything coming across your radar that maybe you liked or perhaps did not like, sir? You know, it was there was just a ton of paper in VIX this week. Um, you know, lots of lots of ratios going up, lots of uh lots of stuff like that. Uh pretty pretty interesting, pretty interesting stuff. Um trying to remember if there's anything specific that that kind of got my, my juices flowing. Um, but you know, not really today. Uh, you know, uh, the, uh, surprisingly puts are, are kind of the leaders today. You got to wonder if people are starting to, to think maybe it's time to fade this, uh, on <laughs> Thursday, there was this big June, uh, this big June 25, Paul by, uh, they bought, it looks like they did the June, uh, they did the June 25 calls tied to, uh, futures. That's probably doing, doing all right here with vol going up. Uh, they did 50,000 of those. That's going to be a strike. That's going to drive some interest. Uh, biggest trade on Wednesday was the July 34, August 36 call spread. Looks like they pulled out of the July to buy the August. Um, there was also a lot of puts and yet some, a May 18, 23 call spread go up for some size and some May. Actually, they did a bunch of different stuff. It looks like they sold May 17, 16, 15, and 14 and a half put to buy the 18 calls, the 23 calls, the 20 calls, and I think they sold the 30 calls. So uh, that was a that was a banger of a trade. Um, pretty interesting, kind of a, a variance type of play. Uh, not a lot happening. I, so what's interesting is the activity has been a lot of 10, 15, 20,000 lots. We don't. I had I didn't see any any of these giant multi hundred thousand lots except for on Monday. When a trader um, traded the uh, the May the May 18 versus the July 20 call spread, and rolled to July, did it tied it was tied with futures, so it's a delta neutral trade. Another trade where they're they're kind of looking for VIX to go up and volatility to move. Um, that was that's really the only massive massive trade, unless you want to count the 50,000 lot from uh, from Thursday. But but uh, a, lo a lot of 10 and 20,000 lots, which is pretty interesting. That it is, listeners, as we keep on rolling to the rest of the Vol universe out here, listeners. Let's start in the meatball and Mr. Rhodes's former favorite. They both kind of bailed on it. Let's see if they've gotten back in since. Good timing on the bailing. Uh, because SVIX uh, giving up the ghost back down to 35.4. That's going to happen, listeners, when VIX Cash pops back into a 21 handle, if ever so briefly. It was down more. Now it's only down about six tenths of a point. That's so obviously uh, SVIX recovering some of its losses from earlier today. Got as low as 34 and about two thirds. That's where it was pretty much coming into the start of the show. It has since rallied up to about 35.4. Uh, putting up some numbers today, 3,600 contracts, the ADV still only about 4,000. So it's ticking up ever so slowly, up about 400 uh, this week. So again, almost 10%. I guess that's not nothing, but uh, it has a ways to go before it's really an options player out there. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, I know you kind of famously washed your hands of SVIX. 
this level, the 34, 35 level, have you started thinking about nibbling? Are you selling any puts? Or are you waiting for more? Um, I have not sold any puts. I did. Um, I did. I did one of those uh, stock repair trades uh, a couple of days ago, and the short. And I, I, I did it with with the options that expire today. And the calls are expire. Everything's expiring out of the money, which I'm totally fine with. Uh, but I was I was trying to maybe uh, catch a little bit, catch a little bit of a bounce on SBIX. Uh, I'm like I'm one quarter of a normal position right now, so I I, I always want to own a little bit of it, um, but I I don't see any reason to rush into uh, you know to rush back into a full position in it these days. Oh, see, I thought you were entirely out. Okay, so you have a little. I, I yeah, they got it got called away from me. You know, I, I I'm not on every week, but it got called away from me. Um, goodness gracious, in the low 40s, and then uh, I, I I I started buying it again when it was just below 40, uh, and so I own a little bit of it. But uh, yeah, I did. I was out for like a day and a half or two days. It was <laughs> You're a very a junkie. Short, it was a very short period of time, and I was like. <laughs> And, and part of it, and and uh, you know, we're all human. Honestly, part of it was like, if this freaking thing goes to eighty, and I don't have any of it, you know, or something like. I mean, I know it wouldn't do it that quickly, but I'm like, if I, you know, if if I don't make any money off of it, and it goes up a whole lot because all I ever do is talk about how great it is, um, I, you know, I should just go ahead and hang it up. So, so that's what I did. Um, so you were out of it for a whole day. <laughs> I was, I, I was, it like got, it, it got called away from me on a, a Friday, uh, two three weeks ago, and then I, I feel like it was like midday Tuesday. I, I bought it back uh, when it just dipped below. When it finally got a little bit below forty. I think you need to go to so. SVIX Anonymous, sir. Hello, I do. I need Russell. help. I, need I have all a kinds problem of help here. <laughs> that, that's what this show is. It's a safe space. You can admit you Thank have you. a problem. You can't go a day without not <laughs> being long. <laughs> Some Vix. <laughs> Mr. Meatball. And I'm a Vixaholic. Yes, I'm a, I'm an S Vixaholic. I can't get enough inverse vol listeners. People there looking at you like, what? What is this guy going on about? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Meatball. Thank goodness, thank goodness I've been on here before. People yes, yes know. that is true. You have confessed your problems to us before. Uh, Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. I know you were kind of out then. You were dabbling a little bit. Where do you stand on S Vix right now? Are you back in like Mr. Rhodes? Well, I'm collared, so my May 35 puts are starting to come into play here. Uh, the 45 calls, uh, I'm probably going to be looking to buy back. Oh, that's right. Didn't you um, want to sell so, the puts for like 10%? Didn't you want a level on the, like, wasn't it like three bucks you wanted on those puts or something like that? Oh, yeah. No, I took in, I basically did the risk reversal for even money, bought the stock for like 38 bucks. I'm going to cover the calls and let these put, let these puts, uh, let these puts cook. Let the puts cook. May 35 puts, listeners, in uh, SVIX. What are you folks up to? What are you slinging out there in SVIX? Are you sitting on your hands? Uh, are you like Russell? Do you have a problem? You can only be out for a weekend, <laughs> and then you're back in. <laughs> uh, that just brings a smile to my face, listeners. As we keep on rolling, is UVIX bringing a smile to your face these days, the sibling product out there in good old vol land? You know, it's from a volume perspective, it's certainly bringing a smile to someone's face these days because uh, things are actually lighting it up out there. I, I was saying for a while, you know, they need the weeklies out there. It does seem like the addition of those has definitely helped the game. We know you Vol folks out there. You, you need your weeklies. You can't just trade monthlies. That's antiquated for you folks. That has definitely helped the volume. Uh, the ADV is now 26,000 contracts a day. That's up 7,000. From this time last week. Obviously, other things are going on in the vol space as well. Vol is popping. That's going to help. Oh, UVX, uh, UVXY reverse split, getting a lot of attention to uh, the levered vol space as well. And then, of course, uh, we have the weeklies, which are popping off out there. Again, 11 and three quarters is where UVX is right now. Uh, kind of unched on the week, which, again, if you know anything about UVX, that's a, that's a no mean feat in and of itself. It was a lot higher when we kicked off the show. It was at about 12 and a quarter or so. It has given up pretty much all of that right now out there. And uh, speaking of the 12 handle listeners, uh, this looks like today is going to bring to a close the saga we have been watching since January 26th when somebody came in and scooped uh, over 20,000 of the April 12 calls in UVIX. We said it then. It's an unusual use case. We don't see it too often. People loading up on a ton of upside 
in UVix. I mean, we see it obviously in other products like VIX. A UVix has issues <laughs> maintaining upside, which is why it's not that frequent of a play. That said, if Vol pops, UVix can pop too. Uh, these had a couple of shining moments, I think, a week or two later where they could have pretty much uh, scratched them, maybe made a little money on them. Uh, but after that, that was about it. We did hit 12 and a quarter today, though. So that a little bit of a tease, a little bit of a tease for these people getting that close above your strike after all this time and then uh, dropping back below it again. I just checked as of a few minutes ago, only 2,300 of these have traded today. So they have not gotten out of even if it, that was all them, even about a tenth of their position. And looks like the biggest print that they hit them on, 500 of them for 30 cents. And then outside of that, it was pretty much a dime here, a dime there. So they pretty much, on the option side, obviously this was done against something else, listeners. Uh, they were probably heavily short, maybe some some VIX, in which case they're kind of wearing it on that side of the trade too, but we won't read too far into that. Just on the option side alone, they're out almost five and a half million bucks on these calls. So that was a bit of an ouchie. Again, they they flirted with them ever so briefly today just to give them a taste. Like, hey. These might be worth something, and now they are indeed worth uh, nothing again. So they had their moment to get a bunch off for around 30 cents this morning. That's probably all she wrote, unless we get another leg to this ball move today. Uh, but intriguing stuff. Mr. Rose, anything catching your eye out there in Uvix land? And also explain to our audience, why did you buy 20,000 of the 12s a couple months ago? Oh, I don't know. Just, uh, you know, I, I'm still recovering from that brain injury, so I do stupid things like that every once in a while. Um, Nah, you. I mean, I, I, it, I got no problem whatsoever with uh, buying calls on Uvix today that expire next Friday. Uh, if uh, you know, if if I think things are going to escalate over the weekend, and in fact, if uh, you know, if you're not comfortable trading index options, uh, back in the day when UVXY was two times, uh, I think that's a ProShares one. Uh, correct me if I, I got the wrong product name on that one. But when it was two times, they actually showed that uh, you you did you got closer to spot VIX performance on spikes from from you know a two times levered ETF than you would from the futures or any kind of option strategies as well. So. Uh, keep that one in mind if you're worried about the volatility spikes over the next, you know, uh, going into weekends or whatever. Uh, it might be kind of interesting to see. I'm, I'm writing down all these things that I'm, I'm going to make some graduate students work work on for me. And <laughs> one of them is, uh, what if you bought UVXY on Fridays and sold it on Mondays? Would it ever work? That could be interesting. And that your use case yeah. you're laying down, I can get behind a little bit of yeah. a flyer for the weekend because you're right. If something right, happens. Right. That's you, the, and I, that, 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 I, th I feel like I've been, I know I can be inconsistent, but I feel like I've been pretty consistent when I talk about UVIX and I, or, and UVXY as well. The, and my, and honestly, my, my running joke when I do the ballroom things for SIBO was if you know, Vladimir Putin's going to invade a neighbor, I can't use that one anymore. Um, you know, over a weekend buy UVIX, it'll be great, but you really got to be very specific on the timing and it's got, I mean, if, if you had known that uh, Israel was going to strike back overnight last night, I, I have not looked at the number, but I will real quick. Um, you know, how would that have worked? Well, it, uh, you know, it opened up a whopping, uh, I don't know, 36 cents. So if you had bought UVIX uh, because you knew what was going to happen overnight between Israel and Iran, you'd have made a whopping 36 cents. That 12 call guy, that's what he was planning for. He was yeah. just, just a few months off yeah. <laughs> with his time. Hey, can, I, can, can, I, can I backtrack one thing because I'm dying to say something? Sure, go ahead. Uh, after I put the weekly list together, a uh, thousand of the April 24th, 47 and a half calls traded for a penny. <laughs> They're listening to the show. They heard me mock them. And ah! then just to spite me, they came I, in. And I, I, I had I've di been dying to bring up the 47 and a half again. <laughs> so there. I just that strike just makes me laugh. I, why, why are you doing I know, why not? You love it. Why not the it's 45s? Why not? the? Why you have to split the difference between the two? Uh, all, all sorts, let alone how far out the money is. There's a lot of. I'd have a conversation yeah. with the 45s as well, but 47 and a half just, just adds that extra little bit of something that makes it yeah. just that much more fun. 
Now let's keep speaking of fun. You mentioned UBXY. We're already kind of coming up again, so let's jump there as well. Hope you enjoyed our deep dive into UBXY last week. By the way, you were right, Mr. Rhodes. That is the pro shares version. Uh, UBXY hanging out at about a 40 right now, 39.90 actually, up about a third of a point. Obviously, it was higher earlier in the day, 41 and about a third. This, of course, still vacillating around the 40 handle after this five for one reverse split from last week. Uh, putting up decent numbers, I guess you can say today, 42,000. It needs a ways to go to hit his ADB, though, of 94,000, which weirdly enough dropped 13,000 from last week. So Ubix is gaining about 10,000. UBXY losing about 13,000. There, there we go. Is the conversion starting to happen? Take that, Mr. UBXY trader on the show last week. I'm just joking. All right, let's keep on rolling. Let's go out here. Uh, Mr. Meatball, sir, uh, anything catching your eye in UBIX land? And also UBXY, you said you've kind of been lured back to that one now, post-reverse split. Uh, what's catching your eye out there, sir? Yeah, well, you know, with the futures structured the way they are, shorting these products, which is generally what I like to do, doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, UVIX, yeah, it, it's up a whopping 30 cents up to 1160. So the problem is it's not expensive enough to actually give you the, the juice. UVXY is back over $40. It's um, well above its reverse. Well, now it's not. It's 39.50. Um, but it's well above its reverse split number. Uh, it is both of these are actually picking up money every single day. In theory, uh, they still move with the VIX futures, but uh, you know the 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 reason why people like to short these that de that decay is actually working against you. Yeah, it'd be a good week to have uh, Mr. UVXY Trader on again. See how all that short premium in UVXY is working right now. As you mentioned, of course, backward. It's kind of challenging time to be doing a lot of the strategies that people like. People love using these products to play the erosion. Not exactly popping off when the futures are backward. Mr. Rhodes, we haven't had a chance to talk to you since uh, the reverse split. What are your thoughts on the somewhat meager but decent reverse split out there in UVXY? And has this lured you back to the dark side of UVXY at all, sir? Uh, it hasn't lured me back to the dark side of UVXY at all. I I I stick with what I know, and and I'm 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 the old dog that's not going to try any new tricks at this point. Um, so it's you know it's nice to see it's got a tradable level. Uh, I feel like you know it, it allows you to do a lot more uh, option wise when we've got a nice a nice bigger handle. Uh, I I talked to one of the ETF guys, and they say I asked, is it an expense thing? But, you know, as far as uh, every time that you have to split, you know, in in, you know, if it's if if it's not an expense thing, why don't you guys do more frequent uh, reverse splits and try to keep that price? You know, it, maybe when it gets down to 15, uh, do something where you get it back up to 45 very quickly uh, just to to make it, a, a for lack of a better way to put it, a more tradable product. Uh, and and they said that really wasn't the reason it was just more of a pain in the butt to do to do but uh, the splits don't really make me change my mind that much about uh, whether or not I'm going to trade them or not uh, I did know you know SVXY did a revert or did a normal split um, and that yeah you know, I'm, st I'm still more of an SVIX guy but SVXY did a you know did a real split where they had to lower the price what is uh, that? I don't even know what that is in the vol space anymore. I, I know. I was saying. shocked. <laughs> so walk our listeners through that really quickly. What did they pull off, sir? Well, I think it was a two for one. I can't remember. I don't remember exactly. They did the pro they did a bunch of them at once. Uh where uh they they I mean they did the you know the reverse split in UBXY and the uh normal split in SVXY uh back on the X date was April eleventh. Uh, it was a two for one stock split. Uh, and they have had to do a reverse one on this product once before back in uh, 2018. Ah, yes. Uh, April 11th. That's what ProShares likes to do. Like they do them all at once. They did them all yeah. back on April 11th, make their lives. I'm with you. I wish they had a little bit more, uh, more logic to some of their split schedule and how they did it and maybe the degree that they did it. But uh, we got into all that last week on the show there. Mr. Meatball, uh, anything else catching your eye? Also, our friend here. Much maligned friend here. Good old VXX listeners uh, coming in at about a 15, 20, actually up about a tenth of a point right now. Uh, almost 100,000 contracts on the tape today. So maybe starting to recover the ADV, also 84,000. That's up 12,000. So still a pale shadow of what it once was, but getting some respectable volume out there. Mr. Meatball, anything catching your eye in VXX, Lancer? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, getting back over 15 is good. Um, there's a little action on it today. Got a trader buying the, uh, 14 and a half, 15 and a half call spread for next week. Uh, tied to stock somebody today bought, or this was the 18th. I'm sorry. Uh, they also bought like 5,000 of the 13 puts in June tied up. Uh, so, you know, seen a little action, a little action today, May 13, 14, 13 put spread going up. Uh, our trader from yesterday sold a third of their position selling the 14 and a half, 15 and a half for next, next week. Uh, let me see if there's any action. Yeah. I mean, th you know what? The option volume is really starting to increase in this thing. Uh, Mark, I, every day I'm looking at, there's several three, four and 5,000 lots in it. You sound like a man that's about to get lured back to the dark side, sir. No, no. I mean, it has some use case, but no, uh, uh, I'm sticking to SVIX and UVXY and yeah. UVIX. And UVIX, yeah, that's that's the one I would be looking at. Uh, I'll, I'll say VXX has its place. Obviously, 100,000 people a day can't be too wrong. Well, they can, but in this case, obviously, it works for them. The big dog out there right now, listeners, in terms of positioning, 14 half puts is about 43,000 of those bad boys. That are going the way of the dodo today with uh, VXX flirting around 15 and a quarter. Intriguing stuff. Speaking of intriguing stuff, a lot of earnings vol popping off this week. Uh, we're coming up against so We don't have time to get into all that. Luckily for you, we cover all that on the website, theoptionsinsider.com. Click on the Options News and Articles tab. You'll see all of our great earnings data, courtesy of our friends over there in Orat's land. There's a lot of it. It's all popping off right now. So if you want to sink your teeth into any of these big tickers that are popping off right now, we're coming up in the next couple of weeks. Get on over there to the website as we get on over into the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, listeners, here we are at the end of the show. And VIX and the markets mostly haven't done a heck of a lot. Uh, S&P is off almost half a percent still. NASDAQ off about 1.4%, still pretty close to about one and a third. Uh, the Dow up a little more, up almost three quarters of a percent. Uh, but other than that, not a heck of a lot of evolution during our show. VIX Cash started the show close to a 19 at about an 1890 or so out there, listeners. It's at about an 1860 or so uh, coming into uh, this portion of the show. Actually taking down about an 18 half now. Looking at where we were for this week, spoiler alert, no 18 handles. Uh, it was myself, it was the Meatball and Michael Lisman of UVXY Infamy out there and i was the highest at 17 and a quarter so i was playing the russell Rhodes role uh, but no joy for me i was looking good until i wasn't today uh then mr meatball palindromic nonsense 1661 no joy there and michael bringing up the rear at 14 and three quarters all right a long way around to saying i was the closest i guess you know what i'll kick things off i will go first and again it's the perennial question listeners will this vol persist through the week until our show next week you know, I'm going to say the answer is, the answer is yes. I'm going to say the answer is yes. I'm going to say, but not as much as we have right now. I'm going to be a little higher than I was last week. I'm going to say 17, I'm going to go 1776, a little bit of American Vol prognostication out there. All right, Mr. Meatball, you were the next closest. Excuse me, what were you feeling for this time next week? You know, um, I'm going to go with, uh, you know, we're at, it's crazy, Mark. We basically remember that yesterday on Option Block, I talked about filling that gap at 49.83, and we're at 49.78 right now. The 100 day moving average is down at 49. And I know I'm sounding like a technician. Go ahead and make fun of me. Chart um, monkey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, but people pay attention to these moving averages. They do. Yeah. Um, and you know, that, that hundred is all the way down at 49 30 ish. So kind of interesting. I'm going to go with 18, 1881. So basically here, <laughs> I was going to say, right, right, so, where you are right now. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Mr. Rhodes, you get the final word, sir. What are you feeling for this well, time next week? Well, just and, and real quick, did I win a couple of weeks ago? 
I guess not. I'll have to go check and I'll have to go check and see. I thought I there was I had a seventeen seventy six guess and we were up in the seventeens uh, like the Friday after I'd made. You that, were high so. again. You get to yeah. be within a tenth of a point. I'll have our producers yeah. go check to make sure. I think I won once. If that's, you that's all. If you won, we will proclaim it to the world on Twitter, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. And and come up with you know a big announcement uh, music music around it. Um, I was, uh, it's funny you said 1776, uh, because I, I was going to go 1812, uh, just a tad slower than where we are. Uh, is that, am, am I, you know what, what's the average between you two's, uh, 1881 and 1776? I'll, I'll do 1825. I'll kind of go in the middle. Go there. 1812. It's an American year. Not quite yeah. as good of a year for America. I mean, the White House uh -huh. burned, not exactly a great one. But hey, you know, no. it's, it's an American history year, I'll give you that. But 1825, not a year that's really deeply associated with American history in any way, shape, or form. But an intriguing one. There's your market for this week, listeners. Uh, myself, the Goldilocks, some might say the accurate prognostication, 1776. Uh, Mr. Rhodes playing uh, the middle role this week, which is a rare departure for him at 18 and a quarter. And the meatball bringing up the upside again kind of a weird reversal at an 1881 and let's go around the horn mr Rhodes, sir folks want to check out what you're working on where should they go what should they do um well i i, I put up something I, I put up a pretty nice systematic approach to trading uh, nasdaq on the nasdaq website ndx options on the nasdaq website last week uh, i've got a little bit more of a follow-up that's going to come with that and then, um, you know, I, I know that we're all about U.S. volatility here, but uh, I've just finished a pretty cool study on trading VIX versus V stocks. I, I picked a mid-morning time, uh, teased out all the data to come up with a time where, you know, that where I, you know, the VIX has settled down a bit and V stocks is coming to the end of their day so that you know we could do some analysis there and they they they've got a good enough relationship that they're really good to trade against each other so uh something coming out around that and of course anything I do I'll throw out there on um on on formerly known as Twitter X V stocks you say international vol you say you That's are right. intriguing I'm an me, internet I'm a, I'm I'm the the um, international man of volatility now. We might have Ooh, to discuss that name. in more detail next week. What do you think? You down for a, talking, a little international vol next week? Maybe put that on your calendar, Mr. I, I could be here. You know, listeners, we always, always wanted to talk a little international vol. Maybe, maybe we shall do so if you are intrigued by such things. In the meantime, check them out over there on the old Twitter machines at Russell Rhodes, two S's, two L's, R-H-O-A-D-S, all one word. Man, that's a mouthful. And speaking of mouthfuls, Mr. Meatball has always got a mouthful of fun and or crazy content for you. Mr. Meatball, if they want to check it all out, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, go to optionpit.com. Uh, I'm putting out content every day. You can follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'm happy to uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy to tweet at me any questions that you have. And that little birdie has told me the Rock Lobster has a videographer following him around today. He does. To chronicle his life for the masses. Sounds fascinating, so I can't wait to watch the, the documentary that is a life, a day in the life, I should say, of the Rock Lobster. In the meantime, uh, check all that out, listeners. Optionpit.com is the place to go. That is going to do it for us on the on-demand side. If you've been listening to us on your favorite podcast player of choice, that will conclude your broadcast week with us. Thank you for joining us throughout the week. Remember, if you missed anything, it's all available for you there. 17-plus years worth of content for you to go back and check out at your leisure of course if you don't want your broadcast week to end you want to come back you want to check out some fun options oddities well then head on over to the pro the options insider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more then we're back again on monday with the old ob all the way through to next friday another episode of volatility views and you know i say it every week we've got some literal weekend risk in the offing these days so i mean it doubly this week Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. 
select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs> 